So you've gotten yourself a Fanatec steering wheel and pedals, and you need to know how to set it up, right? Well, I can tell you from personal experience that setting everything to high is not the answer. Keep watching, and I'll take you through my personal settings for oval, road, dirt oval, and dirt road. Welcome to Boomer Studio. Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about my Fantalab settings for my DD1 wheelbase. I always use the same profile regardless of which wheel I use. The only change is the setup that I use based on the discipline I'm driving. After covering these setups, I'll talk about the real secret to getting the best possible force feedback out of iRacing with a program called IRFFB. All right, let's start with the settings for the oval cars. I like to go with 900 degrees for the maximum steering angle. That gives me good control without too much twitchiness. Uh, too much twitchiness causes tire wear, and that's not good, in, especially in the longer races. Overall force feedback strength I have set to 70%. Keep in mind this is a DD1, so it has 20 newton meters maximum and I think it's 15 to 17 maximum sustained torque uh, newton meters torque so 70% gives me a good range of feel without trying to rip my thumbs off if I have a hard crash into the wall or something force feedback linearity this smooths out the feeling between the maximum peaks and the holding force just helps keep a, a smoother feel to it. Natural dampening, natural friction, natural inertia. I have those set pretty low down to 20% 20, 20 here in the Panalab settings. Uh, that helps keep the wheel from being so heavy that it wears you out during a race, especially longer races. Force feedback interpolation filter. This helps smooth out the differences between the highs and the, this little small noise uh, you might find that you have if you take your hands off the wheel while you're sitting in the pits at idle and the wheel starts twitching around you may need to adjust this uh, force effect intensity I have this set to 80 80 percent 100 percent is the most sharp and can be very harsh and result in rattling again like I mentioned sitting in the pits uh, zero is very smooth, and but you get you lose all your feeling. So I I like eighty percent. That gives me the best feel. Game force effect strength, spring effect strength, and damper effect strength. This is the, the forces that are coming from the game to the to the software, and I have all those set to a hundred percent. Brake level indicator. If you have your Club Sport uh, pedals, V3 that are connected directly to the wheelbase, like mine are, then you can set this to when you press the pedal a certain percentage, it will begin to vibrate. I don't necessarily like that, so I, I use use another setting here in vibration that we'll talk about in a little bit. The vibration strength for the steering wheel. Uh, I don't have a vibrating steering wheel, the rumble motors inside the grips, so I don't mess with that. These I have set to auto and the paddle module when I have it on, on the uh, wheel. It's set to clutch bite point. A brake force. This is one that you can adjust again if you have it set connected to your wheelbase. And you can set the amount of force that it takes to get full lock up the wheels. I uh, like 80%. Uh, 100% means you have to press the pedals very hard. And 0% means you just lay your foot on it and you can lock the wheels up pretty easily. I don't like to lock them up, but I don't like to have to mash the pedal so hard that it, you know, I'm afraid it's going to break. Then we can go to my road settings, which is pro my profile number three. You see here, 
a lot of the stuff is the same. The game effect strength, the stuff coming from the game is all the same. Brake force. What I change for road settings primarily is the steering angle. I bump it down to 720. And the overall force feedback strength, I take it down to 50%. Again, this this allows me enough feeling without being overpowering. And we'll go to the in-game settings, actually the IRFFB settings, and explain it a little bit towards the end. Then I have the dirt oval settings in profile number four. Maximum steering angle 540 degrees. The overall force feedback strength is at 60%. Everything else is pretty much the same as before for the same reasons. And finally, in profile one, I have what I use for the uh, off road dirt like the trucks and the rally cars uh, 540 degrees I have a lower much lower overall force feedback strength 45 percent that still gives me enough feeling but allows me to turn the wheel quick enough to react to whatever the car is doing uh, the natural dampening because this is so low the dampening friction and inertia I do have that set up a little higher to give me feeling on those the force effect intensity and information coming from the game I have those turned down to keep them from becoming overpowering the rest of the settings are the same now I talked about the pedal vibrations so we can go here and it says as you can see vibration not supported with the wheel that I have but the brake pedal you can see I have the ABS vibration enabled and anytime the ABS is activated it will begin to rumble you just get a light buzz in the pedal and the same with the wheel lock if you lock the wheels up you'll get a similar vibration I don't have the understeer or the oversteer vibration set here but that does that does come into play in IRFFB and the same for the throttle uh, wheel spin I have that enabled so if the wheels start spinning over over accelerating I'll get vibration in the pedal and also rev limiter when it reaches 98.0% it'll begin to vibrate alright now we get to the real secret of the best possible force feedback you can get in iRacing. This is the setup screen for IRFFB. Uh, I won't go into the installation in this video since we're just talking about force feedback settings, but I will have a link to the setup video down below in the description as well as up above. If you need to learn how to set it up, download it and set it up. There are a few intricacies to the setup but it's not really all that difficult but anyway settings uh, you start with your force feedback device in this case the podium wheelbase DD1 you want to go with force feedback type of six, 360 Hertz you get the option of 60 Hertz direct filtered or 60 Hertz direct filtered 720 the 360 Hertz direct gives you the best uh, feeling with the lowest latency min force I set to zero max force you can play around with the, uh, the instructions and on the wiki for IRFFB says that the lower settings actually increases stronger output uh, I'm not sure exactly how that works I just I play around with this slider until I get a good number that doesn't uh, cause me a lot of cutout uh, anywhere from 35 up to 50 I run 50 on on the uh, NASCAR's 35 which is a little bit stronger on the as you can see down here pro trucks 
dampening. I leave it set to zero. That's handled by the steering wheel software itself. Suspension bumps. This is what allows you to feel extra front suspension telemetry. Uh, you feel feel more of the curb strikes and bumps in the road a little better. It just gives little little minute jerks to the wheel when you hit things. Understeer on cars that it's available in iRacing. Uh, obviously the Pro Truck does not have the understeer telemetry available. But what this does is reduces torque when the front wheels have a high, high lateral slip, i.e. understeer. The offset uh, creates a dead zone. I don't run any dead zone on, on any of my cars in, in here, so it stays at zero. This will get up to 35 or so as well if it's available on the, for the understeer. The seat of the pants effect. This is this is the main heart that gives gives this the overall best feel in my mind because it allows you to actually feel and work the rear end uh, looseness of the car or oversteer. You act you can actually feel the car. The the tension on the wheel tightens up or gets looser depending on how the car is reacting. Uh, I like to run that at 65, but that is a variable you can play with, see how much you like. Anywhere from probably 50 to 70 is a is a good range to play around with. Again, this offset, the seat of pants offset, I run it at zero, because all that does is create a dead zone for you. I use check mark or the 360 degree hertz, 360 hertz telemetry for suspension effects. I use car specific settings that way I can change these numbers for different vehicles, different cars that I'm running. When I load up that car, these settings automatically come back, just like in iRacing if you use uh, different car specific settings. Reduce force when parked. Yes, of course, you don't want the wheel jumping around or being hard to turn when you're parked. You can have it set up to run on startup. I use my computer for other things, so I don't always start it up and jump straight into iRacing, although I wish I could sometimes. Uh, sometimes you do have to do real work on this thing, so run on startup. I also don't start minimized. I like to see this thing pop up. Because you do, ha I do from time to time run into a problem with it launching. It'll launch into the task manager, but you don't see what is actually happening, and it doesn't load up in the ta task bar on the task bar. So I, you run it. I right click on the uh, icon or on the app, run in administrative mode. And nine times out of ten, it'll run on the first first go. If not, you have to control, delete, bring up your task manager, shut down, force the shutdown of IRFFB, and start it again. And almost always, it'll it'll run the second time. I don't know what that problem is, but maybe it's just a problem with my computer. I don't know. But it's worth the worth the effort for this seat of the pants effect that you get and the understeer on the car that is available and then debug logging i don't run that at all all right so the next step is to make sure that our wheel is set up for whatever car we are going to jump into in this case it's the off-road truck so if you remember from the setup a little bit ago profile number one or setup number one is what i use for the truck we can verify that with a funky switch over and up. Shows that we're at 540, which is what I like. And I go back, clear the setup off of there. Now, the first time you run this in iRacing, you will have to uh, recalibrate your wheel. And it's very simple to do, just like anything else. Uh, we'll start here with recalibrating. So you turn the wheel. All the way to the left, all the way to the right, 
your number there of 65,537. You divide that by two to get right in that middle. Should give you 32,767.5. We can't get the 767.5 out of there. So we get it as close as we can. 72, 7, And it bounces around. You can see just barely moving the wheel. And it bounces around quite a bit. So there we go. 72768. It's showing at 50%. So we're done with that part. Now we turn to 90 degrees. Turn the wheel 90 degrees. Let's you can use a straight edge if you have one handy there to get your 90 degrees or you can go to 540 on the screen verify it it's pretty darn close close enough for me if i can get it to stay there again it's very sensitive it bounces around a lot there we go 540 Click done and back to center. You're done with that part. Then you just have, might have to recalibrate your pedals. So you can do that uh, throttle, full down and back. It's done. Brake, full brake, and release and done. I do use the auto clutch. I have a clutch pedal, but I use it for the handbrake in the truck. So I use the auto clutch here and click done. And as I said, using the handbrake in the truck, I come up here and get, I use the clutch for the handbrake. So fully forward and back. That's done. Done. Then go back to drive. Now you got a full throttle, full brake, and handbrake on your pedals. All of these settings are grayed out. You can see you can't adjust them here because you are using the IRFFB. So there's no changes to anything here. You do want to make sure that you have enable force feedback set and brake factor zero since we made that change in the Fanalab. Uh, software as well all right and that uh, pretty much wraps it up that takes you through the fanalab settings on the wheel itself as well as a brief introduction to irffb which like i said that's that's where the real force feedback the best force feedback comes from that's the best kept secret in iRacing uh, the third party program it's free and like I said, there'll be a link in the description below on installation video that I'm going to make for it. And also in the link up above here. So, thanks for watching.